One person I know says, do I think that getting up early, going to bed early is only for certain individuals? My answer is, you need to experiment and see, test everything. Just test everything in life in general. Test everything. For instance, how do you know if getting up early, if you're if you're a morning person, how do you know that? Get up every day for a week at 4 a.m. Get out of bed. Feet hit the floor at 4 o. You know, four minutes, like five seconds after four o'clock. Set the alarm. Just get up. Okay. Do that by eight o'clock. You will be by 8 p.m. You will be beyond tired. Now, right now, it is, it's about 10 of 8. It's easier for me to go to bed at 4, it's easier for me to get up at 4 a.m. than it is to go to bed at 8 p.m. There's been times where I started live streams at 7, 7.30, and I'm going to like 9, 9.30, there's podcasts that ask me to be on at 8, 8.30, and I'm just like, oh my god, that's like past my bedtime. You'll notice that there are some nights where I just, I end my live streams completely fizzled out, 100%. You are watching me literally minutes before hitting the sack. I turn off the camera, go in the house, splash some water on my face, brush my teeth, and I hit the sack. Literally, that's that's how it works for me. I'm not going in and watching an hour or two of TV. That doesn't happen. Because I look forward to getting up at four. I literally start boiling water for whatever I'm drinking that morning, the next morning, at 4.05, 4.10. That's what I do. And I am broadcasting now from my bed, which I've never done in five years. It is harder to go to bed early than it is to get up early. I was doing a two mile walk every morning and then I developed a condition in my left foot that I've gotten treatment for and I will be getting back into that. I changed my sneakers completely, completely changed my sneakers and experimented with different insoles to be able to do that and had some uh, cortisone shots and that kind of stuff, which were <laughs> the treatment from hell, as far as I'm... If you, ever got a, if you ever got a shot in your foot, I know people get shots in their knees and shoulders and this kind of stuff, going in through the side of your heel to the middle of your heel, going literally through the side of your foot, going right down to that little... Where, your heel. Yeah... Whew. I have to say that that pain is right up there in the top 10 of pains I ever felt. But I will tell you that I felt relief literally within one hour. Relief that was keeping me from walking by two miles. Two miles is not a lot. If it's a very hilly two miles, it's a lot. So I come back and I'm soaking wet after two miles. But I will tell you, the discipline to get up at 4 a.m. is easier, far easier, far easier. Like, I literally read an hour now before I start my day. Sometimes I'm reading fiction, sometimes I'm reading nonfiction. This morning I'm reading more uh, a devotional biography of a guy. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, book called Confessions of a Mega Church Pastor. Pretty interesting. And I just got done reading My Unfinished Business by Dan Kennedy, which incredible. Just, just a great book. But going to bed early, there's always something to do. There's all, You're always going to find something to do. Getting up early don't freak out. Getting up early, the thought of getting up early is more disturbing than actually getting up early. I'm not kidding you. 
It's disciplining yourself to go to bed. Now, what happens when you go to bed early? You're a party pooper. You become a party pooper. If you're a family man, your family you know, doesn't want to go to bed at 8 o'clock. So that's something you're going to have to deal with. Maybe you're going to have to make it 9 o'clock and then get up at 5. I get up at 4 because nobody gets up at 4. Nobody. And when I'm outside, I'm... I'm out there with the deer and the foxes, and and it's kind of cool. I like that. But I will tell you that for the average person, your sleep time is cultivated. People who say, oh, I could never do that. You cultivated what you currently have, which means you can cultivate an earlier time. I get more work done before I leave for a part-time job that I work three days a week, I get more work done in the morning by reading, checking email, responding to emails, that kind of thing. But the first hour, literally, like from four to five, that's my devotional time. That's the first thing that goes into my head. And I'm talking with the Lord and reflecting and from 5 to 6, that's when there's email work and, uh, n you know, I, I'm writing ideas for my newsletters for the upcoming week and so forth. And then 6 o'clock, I grab a shower. 6.30, I leave for work. That's what I do. But what about going out? What about friends coming over? What about parties? What about going to the movies? Things, things start at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock. People invite me on podcasts. You know, they say, okay, be ready. I'll send you a link at 8. I'm like, oh, 8 o'clock. You know, why can't you send it to me at 4 o'clock, you know? So, but I can live with that. I'm, I'm good with that. Getting up early is so much easier. And the thought of getting up early is more disturbing than actually getting up early. It's going to bed on time. That is going to be the hardest hurdle for you. It's going to be the hardest. It's the opposite of what you think. And I still get eight hours of sleep a night. Yeah. Just some thoughts about those that, you know, have tossed and turned and thought about the 4 a.m. club. Let me t The 4 a.m. club is not that bad. Okay? I don't have a superpower. You don't have to be Jocko Willink to go, you know, to get up at 4 a.m. You really don't. You just got to go to bed early. That's all. Discipline yourself to do that. How do you do that? Get up at 4 a.m. every day this week. By the end of the week, you'll be so tired by 8 o'clock. You'll want to go to bed. That's, like I said, if you still, if you, it's easy for me. It's easy for me as a single man to go to bed at 8 o'clock. It is. I know as a married man, uh, that would be different. That would be more, probably more like 9 o'clock, most likely. So, and I also take a nap every now and then. I am a 15-minute napper. I go out. 15 minutes, I'm just like, I don't just rest. I close my eyes, and I am in la-la land. I dream. So that's another thing. Power naps. Do that whole Thomas Edison power nap thing. It works great for me. It really does. And if you have the ability to do that, you know, to cultivate that, study that. Do some study. Click around and see about napping. There's going to be some research. Like, there have been studies done. It's like, oh, screw the studies. What works for you? What works for you? What works for me is a 15-minute nap, and I zonk right out, man. And when I wake up from it, I'm good. Take a sip of water, and I'm good. Anyways, just wanted to share that with you. That was a question that someone asked me that I felt was important to answer before I go to bed at 8 o'clock. All right. Good night.